Oh, that's good, because he's ready to go. Are you ready? I think so. So, ladies and gentlemen, once more, without further ado, Jasper Byrne. Thanks, Rami. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to check my level here. Um, okay. Um, so, what I'd like to do today is uh, talk about... Um, I suppose the theme of my talk is trying to make stuff on a budget, really. Um, but how can, how can you still make stuff that's maybe, hopefully, it, it, when it works, as interesting as uh, very realistic, photoreal, the triple-A art that we see in, you know, in the big games on the, the consoles? Because um, I, I think that uh, a lot of indie games have, have actually got just as interesting or just as beautiful, subjectively, Art, uh, the art is just as beautiful, um, even though it's a lot more um, simple in some ways. Like um, it's, you know, so a lot of people talk about uh, pixel art and um, call it a retro aesthetic. And actually, I, I sort of take issue with that because I, I see it as a, an aesthetic, like a way that you might choose to have your game look in the same way as you might use like flat shaded polygons or you know something that that is actually quite easy to produce as a small team of one or two people um or you know or an indie sized team uh so that's kind of what I want to talk about because I've I've made the mistake a lot I think with my own stuff of um like starting too ambitious and not en ending up being able to, to produce the art for the games that I, that I want to make. And, uh, and it's, it's a problem that I always have. So I keep uh, ending up downscaling what I, I want to do in order to, to make it work in the end. Uh, so what I wanted to talk to you first about is how, how uh, Lone Survivor, the, the game that uh, came out last year, was a, it's, um, a survival horror um, but done in 2D with uh, a side view. And uh, I wanted to, um, originally I wanted to make an adventure game uh, with this, the theme about dreams and um, using dream logic. And so the idea was, was there a long time ago, about 10 years ago or something. And I started to make, at the time, I started to make quite an ambitious um, point and click adventure. Um, because I hadn't even considered it as a survival horror at that point. Um, but it's still basically the same idea. And at the time, it was called Amnesia. And this is going to sound a bit confusing, because Amnesia is actually a game, a survival horror game that came out last year by Frictional Games. Uh, so it's nothing to do with that. But at the time, my game was called Amnesia uh, when I was working on it. And uh, so... I'm going to try and find a couple of old versions of Amnesia to, to show you um, um, because it ultimately did become Lone Survivor uh, in the end. Um, so the one I have, I think, I think um, this is the one. Oops. No, obviously not. Um, wait. I had it. Uh, Sorry, my screen size is a lot smaller on here. Um, I'm just getting used to it. Uh, it. Some of this is very, very old stuff. So uh, let me see. Is it this one? I don't, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get this version to run. Oh, yeah, OK. Um, Unfortunately, it's not. It's in a screen res that's higher than the um, the monitor there. But you can see, like I've got um, um, there should be a way of playing the game, but I'm not sure how. But you can sort of see in the background there's like the basics of a point-and-click adventure type game there, and this sort of um, um, this tool is actually still the same tool that I, I make Lone Survivor with. So in effect, it is actually the same, the same code, even though this is like 
um, 2006, this one. And, um, and I, I'll probably be showing you a couple more versions. Um, unfortunately, I can't show the, uh, the full game there, but I think I've got a slightly later version. Hold on. Um, it's just that I've got so many versions of this, of course. Uh, that's actually 2007. But, uh, oh no, sorry, that was, yeah. Um, okay, so I think this is a, a slightly more um, finished, or not finished, but you know, a later version of it, um, of the same thing. Right, um, so here's, here's um, the same editor, but a little bit further along. And you can see like the, the graphical style I got to by this point was actually quite quite elaborate. You know, it was being generated in well, I, I was doing it in 3D Studio, um, which at the time was taking a long time because it was like 3D Studio Max 2 or something, and it was it was really you know just to render stuff took ages, like um, on a Pentium 2 or, or something. But um, so it was just taking me a long, long time, you know, and I. I Although I really wanted to do it like this and have it, the characters lit, you know, and there's, I don't know, it's, it's high res, you know, relatively speaking, and, um, you know, I would have loved to have made a game that looked like this in in a way, but I, I, I just, you know, I, I realized that it it wasn't possible. Like the character is um, was done in uh, using Poser. And I was sort of outputting the frames and cleaning them up and things. And um, but I realised that I, I wouldn't be able to animate him doing anything other than a, a walk cycle, really, because uh, it was built into Poser and things like that. So all of these things make such a big difference, you know, in, in how long your game is going to take. Like every single decision like this is is huge. So this guy's got eight walking directions or something. Um, you know, and, and so on. Um, so it's it's just like everything is going to take a lot longer. All of the walls need to have not just textures, but normal maps and, you know, and and so on and so on and so on. Um, it's pretty much like like making a, a sort of static version of a, a AAA sort of backdrop, um, even though it doesn't move and you don't have to code it, it's still just as much artwork to produce it. Um, so even though I really wanted to make Lone Survivor as it was called Amnesia at the time, like as a, as a pure point-and-click adventure with high-res art, um, there was only one game at the time, I think, that w was actually doing anything like it. Um, and it was from a team, it was from an indie team, but it was about 20 people. And on my own, it was just never going to happen, you know, if you're going to try and do the music and everything as well. So, um, so that's what, um, so this is actually even like the third, fourth generation of Amnesia. In fact, the, the last one that I showed you was not even rendered. I started off by doing it by photographing th things and um, and just basically processing them in, in Photoshop. Um, and in fact, that's probably a more practical way of, of doing it. Like, had I worked around that, it might have been a good way of making a, an adventure game. I suppose this is what I'm trying to say today, really, is that you, you need to be really creative with your process um, to actually make it happen, because otherwise you'll never finish anything. You know, you've got to... As an indie, I mean, um, you, you know, when, with a smaller budget or time budget, um, then you've got to you've got to make best use of your time, I suppose. Um, and I don't think it was best use of my time to, I don't know, like learn 3D Studio Max and learn character rigging and things like that. Um, so, <clears throat> so the game went on the back burner. Um, it's interesting because like this editor is literally the Lone Survivor editor now, um, so it's, it hasn't changed. It's funny for, for me to see it because it hasn't changed much at all. Like, um, yeah. Anyway, so um, what happened next was I basically completely abandoned the game and I I um, moved into a game company and I was I was. Um, 
starting to make indie stuff on the side, um, sort of not really allowed to, but I, well, it, as long as I didn't release it. But um, but I did enter this ga game competition, uh, which I shouldn't really have done, but I, was, I couldn't resist it because the theme, it was on TIG Source. Um, and if you don't know about TIG Source, as an indie, it's, you know, it's pretty much the center of the universe um, for meeting other indies online and things. Um, so it's a really useful site. Um, it was kind of when I just, th this was sort of pre, that game was pre-discovering TIG Source. And then when I, when I discovered TIG Source, um, it sort of opened up a whole new world to me, really, because I met other like-minded people and uh, probably wouldn't be standing here right now if it wasn't for that site. So I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't. Um, but they ran a series of competitions, and I entered um, this game called... Well, I entered this competition called um, uh, the Bootleg Demakes Competition, and it was a one-month with no prize, and uh, the idea was to make a, a sort of almost like a, a sort of Southeast Asian bootleg version of a of a you know uh, of a game cart because they do exist um, you know like Chinese sort of copies of of Mario and things like this so like um, uh, and you know on on fake consoles that are slightly differently spec from a Net, a Famicom or NES or whatever and. So that's, that was a really interesting theme to me, like uh, take a, a game that you love in, that's, you know, quite um, well produced or polished and actually like make it in a worse way. Um, so that was that was really interesting. And so my idea was Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games of all time and I, I wanted to do Silent Hill. Um, so I made this one called Soundless Mountain 2. And... Um, this is kind of unrelated to to uh, the other game at the time. Um, <clears throat> um, but this is the first game I think where I, I I realized that I needed to do things in a, a quicker way, and because obviously it was a month competition, and um, so my my idea was well because it was for the. A, a, an imaginary NES, this game, um, rather than um, you know, so that had that it had that limitation on it right from the start, because it was a it was a D make, and I wanted to sort of make it authentically NES looking, um, and so you know you got the scan lines, you've got the the same color palette from the NES and, um, and things like that. Um, I mean, it's still it's still not using the exact NES limitations because I don't think that's to me that's not interesting. I, I think it's more interesting to use our modern technology to to kind of do stuff that we couldn't do back in the day. Otherwise, there's not really much point, maybe. Uh, but so if you've seen Lone Survivor, it's it's very similar, like a side side view um, survival horror um, in quite low detail. And um, yeah, basically, it's a it's a scene for scene a remake of of the original game um, up until a certain point in the game when when I stopped making it. Um, but it is literally like scene for scene. But that was a really interesting experiment in in terms of you know how can you take something that is um, very polished um, and make that how can you make it on a budget and still make it kind of appealing maybe because it did. It won the competition, which really surprised me. And um, maybe, maybe that's just because there was a lot of Silent Hill fans there. But, um, but then again, maybe like I, I don't know. Maybe it got it sort of it still was appealing despite being a lot simpler looking than than the original game, um, or something. <laughs> um, so, yeah. In fact, what I can show you, um, um, which is interesting, because. The um, I'll just skip this. Um, but the game, the game was unfinished. Um, I never, I never completed what I even planned to to complete, which was the um, the end of the apartment section. Um, but actually, this is a version which no one's ever seen. Um, oh, he doesn't seem to be walking. Ah, oh, yes, he is. Uh, just to, just to give you an idea of what it's like. It uses the uh, the NES colors, but that that limitation actually made it so much quicker, you know, to 
Um, Because I was like, well, I don't have to decide on my color palette now because I've decided, I've said, you know, for for some, even though my computer can generate a lot more colors than the the NES palette of 240 or whatever it is, I've decided to use those. And just making that decision made it a lot simpler. Um, As you can see, there's probably only like six, seven colors in this screen here. Um, And... And it doesn't really need it. Anything else, you know, it, it, um, it otherwise it wouldn't look like a an ES. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is Silent Hill, uh, Samus Mountain. Sorry, um, I, I wanted to show you um, just because I, I've never, <laughs> I've never shown anyone. Um, I, I would quite like to show the uh, later part of the game if I can get it to work. I managed to do it. Uh, it's a bit wonky, my save game system on here. Oh, no, it's for some reason, I think it's because it's the computer's too fast. Um, it was made on a lot older machine. Um, but I wanted to show the later part, which has actually never been seen. Um, what is it? Okay, I'm hoping. Oh, no. For some reason, it doesn't want to let me um, select which save game I've got on here. Uh, otherwise, I'll be able to show you. Um, let me just try one more time. I don't know. There, I could see the save game was there, but for some reason, there's a bug, and I don't want to debug my game like live on stage because then we'd use the rest of the hour. So, um, uh, so yeah, I'd like to move on to. What happened next was that gave me a lot of inspiration to do uh, a bigger survival horror. And then at a certain point, I realized that actually the game that I I had been trying to make, um, Amnesia, was a survival horror. Um, But it was a psychological survival horror. So it was about surviving your own nightmares in in a way. And so it made perfect sense. and also, I think I'd fallen out of love with the point-and-click adventure as a as a genre just at that particular time in my life, because I, I hadn't I, I sort of hadn't got round the, the the dead ends and the the problems that they, those games present um, as a designer. So I wanted to 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 make a game that was um, it it didn't hinder you because you you couldn't figure out the puzzle. So. Um, a survival, a psychological survival simulation made seemed to make sense to me, and um, so the um, the dream aspect is was still all in the game, you know. Um, so I, I'd like to show some versions of Lone Survivor. I've got uh, uh, quite a lot of bills here somewhere. Um, where is it? Yeah. Um, As you can see, there's quite a lot of versions. Oops. Uh, that's my alarm clock, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so going, going right back, um, this is one of the earliest versions that I could find. And it's quite interesting. I think, if I remember right, yeah, the, the character's actually got no mask. So you can see what he looks like. And nobody's ever seen that. Um, uh, so that was before I decided he had a face mask, um, and so no one's ever seen his face. And there you go. Um, and his animation's different and stuff. He's not. He doesn't look quite the same. And also the scrolling doesn't work in the same way. It's really jerky and horrible in this. Um, but the basics are pretty much all there. Um, if you've played the final game, it's it's it actually still looks fairly like this. You know, this um, uh, your your stairs there are, are still there, and that door is still there, and this this corridor here is still still here. Um, so this this scene actually, uh, although it's done without text boxes and and things like that, is is actually in the final game. Um, Um, so this is just the sort of early stage of me getting getting the script language working and things. But um, the art style is pretty much fi- well. It's not final, but it's like very close to what I ended up with. Um, it's the same resolution. It's the 
um, you know, the lighting effects and the uh, which were done with shade, uh, sort of shaders and flash, but they they're no longer supported, so so I wouldn't recommend using those. Um, but um, it's you know it's it's ninety percent there, I suppose, and like because of lone, I mean, sorry, because of Soundless Mountain, um, then. I had the inspiration to do it on a mu you know do the same game but on a, a much much smaller scale, and you know instead of um, 1,024 pixels across like Amnesia, it was it was six, uh, 160, you know, uh, so 10 times or nine times smaller resolution and uh, and uh, <coughs> and the other thing was. Keeping it to a very small color palette, and um, really just letting the uh, the effects do the work, I suppose. Um, actually, what you can see here is like the the art started off a little bit simpler compared to the the final game. Um, this is actually a bit more like Soundless Mountain, uh, where where the you know everything is in quite low color, and if you look at the um, the door and the the wall there. It's actually, you know, it's it's sort of pixeled a bit like the the NES sort of um, level of colours. Whereas in fact, in the final game, I ended up drawing over it and over it again as I was going through it. So I think it's good to start with a simple style because it might even end up more complex. Um, so all of these bits um, in the final game look quite different. Even though they're the same, they've been painted over and painted over again, and eventually, like they sort of become more painted, more painted look, I guess. Um, let me see. Uh, so yeah, this one looks roughly the same, um, but just skipping through some of these. Um, yeah, um, and here just playing with lighting treatments here, but still all the effects are the same at this point. Um, so here we go, yeah, so there's this version, which now I've got a, a text box. Um, actually, the full screen's not working. But um, so you can see now, like, um, although it's a bit dark on the screen, um, uh, but uh, this 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 art is now a bit more painted here. So I've started to use a, you know, um, a, t a tablet. And yeah, he's the final version of the character as well uh, by this point, pretty much. Um, so the only thing that changed was he got his mask after a, a couple of versions. I think he started with the mask. I took it off. I wasn't brave enough to, d to do it. But in the end, because a lot of people, I still get this a lot where people think he, he's actually smiling. and. Um, but that's one of the things I like about pixel art, and and you know it's one thing that I wanted to use in this game particularly because as an aesthetic rather than um, I'm doing it because it's simple. But I think this game works better in pixel art because you 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 can't fully make things out, so you you kind of make up the the pixels that you can't see and and so that, that that's cool that people think he's got a really insane grin you know and um that that's that's really interesting to me i think um even though it kind of it, when it was the only comment on every video that was you know out there but it was a little frustrating but i i've come to really realize that that's something i like about it um you know it's 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 that that uh, ambiguity because because it's so low detail, um, so it, it's it can actually work in your favour, and I think in, especially in a horror game like this, um, to use something that's hiding a lot of stuff really, um, uh, and that's that scene actually you just saw there was cut out of the game. Um, because if you've if you've played it, um, but it's made it its way back into the new uh, PS3 and Vita version that's coming on, coming out this this summer. Um, so yeah, that's a little sneak peek of that. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of builds on here. Um, um, I s I played a lot with the. So what I spent a lot more time on than the you know than the graphics themselves was 
was actually the the effects and the filters. You can see a few a few filters going on here and effects. Um, there's grain. There's you know scan lines. There's vignetting. There's the the lighting system. Then there's um, glows. There's desaturation filter. There's warp filter that that moves the screen to the side and and um, you know, so it was actually like doing things in code that would make the art like come alive without actually doing any art, if you know what I mean. Um, I, like that's that's a way you, if you're doing everything yourself that you can you can really make um, interesting visuals without actually even drawing. You know, um, uh, I think Tom Tom Betts is going to talk about generative maybe uh, music and 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 which is a similar thing. Um, it's it's you know it's using code to make art basically. Um, and you know someone like Cactus uh, who made Hotline Miami is is so good at that stuff. Um, all the text in that game, it looks like it's done in um you know a professional software like after effects or something but he's actually coded all of these these cool text effects and, and things like that and they're quite hypnotic you can just look at the screen and it's just a, a bunch of text and it looks cool you know it's really it's really appealing um uh, so stuff that you can do with code is is you know one way of, of making more detail even when your assets or your your art pieces are, are much simpler um, so the f yeah I mean uh, I tweaked all of this stuff a lot so it did you know it takes a long time to do that stuff you shouldn't underestimate how long that is going to take um, to, to tweak uh, let me see um, <coughs> so here's a, a slightly later version again a later version again which you can see like the, the effects are slightly different in here um, I've actually got a lot more detail, sort of scan lines and um, um, the pixels have a you know CRT type effect on them and things like that. Um, so it's it's you know it's that sort of it got more elaborate. So even if you you start with the idea of it was going to be as simple as Soundless Mountain, um, but in the end, it turned out to be almost as detailed, but on a lower resolution than <laughs> as the original game in terms of, you know, um, how much shading there is and things. Um, shading and lighting, I suppose. Uh, let's see. So you can see this like pretty much looks like the final game um, if you if you've played it, but it's it's subtly different. Like again, this room's had more painting over and more. Um, unfortunately, the, it's a bit dark on here, but um, this is virtually the the final look. Um, I'll show you the final game, so that that would be a, a probably the best way. Um, let me see. I'm, uh, actually, I'll run it from because I'm working on it at the moment. I just run it from from here. Um, so this is the the version that I'm putting together for the PS3. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to show you this, but well, there you go. Uh, um, so yeah, the the logo changed, <laughs> um, and the f the the final treatment of the the actual sort of overlay effects and things is slightly different, and um, that w that did take a long time, and um, yeah, I mean this room. I'll try and make it a little brighter, um, but uh, this room is slightly more, it's very hard to see on here, but it, it is a little more um, sort of smoothly painted, because I've just gone over and over and keep changing the colours and things, and um, you know, it's, it's what, what's called an art pass, I think. I'm not, an, but I, I should qualify this whole talk by saying I'm not an artist and I'm not a designer or really a coder or anything, so I, I'm not good at any one particular thing. Um, so, and I, I don't think you have to be um, to make good games, uh, maybe, um, but, but I'm not an artist at all, so. Like I don't please don't take my art advice as 
this is how to make art. <laughs> but uh, this is just what I've done um, in, in my games. Uh, um, but yeah, the, the final treatment, um, it, it is hopefully quite sort of looks when you play it, especially in um, up front, uh, you know, in front with in front of you in, in a dark room. It's it's it does look quite like a, a, an old uh, CRT going wrong, you know, um, and and I, and it's sort of a quite unnerving, I think, because of it. But actually, that that balance of the the grain, the flicker, the all the various effects was actually quite hard to to get right, um, but. I think it's worth spending time on that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me show you a. I wonder if I can show you a sequence. Um, I don't know if I, where I am in this game. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's a little bit dark. I don't know if I can really show you Lone Survivor. I've had this problem before in a previous talk, and it literally is just too dark to show in a in a place like this. Um, unfortunately, um, without you know, it does need it needs darkness, and and on a projector, it never works very well. Um, I'm I'm struggling to see that. Are you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's weird because I can see it fine on here, but it's it's definitely like right at the the darker end. Oh look, there you go, some dancing monsters for you. Um, uh, yeah, so this is um, the new version which I'm working on, but it's it's basically it's it's identical um, in the first version of the game. Um, but uh, yeah, if I hold on, maybe if I turn my flashlight on, you can see something. Uh, Wait, let's change the battery. Um, yeah, you can see something there. So yeah, you can see like towards the end, this is you know one of the last locations that I drew, I think, and it's it's much more painted by this point. It's literally just using a um, a tablet and and just drawing it. Um, I I started off. Tr I mean, I I do try and like do keep things on on the pixel boundaries so that you know you get um, a nice hard edge and stuff on the walls, things like that. And just try and use the the pixels to their you know f as to their best advantage, I suppose. Um, just like you know, making sure like that that black line around the edge is two pixels or something, that sort of thing, rather than oh, I'll just draw it and hope it just falls in the right place, you know. Because um, otherwise, in this resolution, if you paint like like just paint, it it's, it just looks like a smudge. <laughs> so you just got to sometimes like you know line up with the the pixels, um, but. Um, so it, you know, it did end up quite elaborate, really. Like, if you look at the way these this, these scenes are painted, it's quite um, it's quite like the same level of um, sh light, light and shadow as as the other Amnesia game. Um, so um, yeah, it's a sh I, I I had wanted to show you some more of um, uh, the. A sneak peek of the the ending because we're about halfway through the talk, so I figure I've got time to to do this. Um, this is a secret new ending. Uh, hold on. Um, I'm just gonna have to do something fiddly to get it to work. Really? You don't want me to spoil it? Okay. All right. No, that's fair enough. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, I can I can understand. It's it's not the ending ending, but I was going to show you a bit. Yeah, I think that's I think you're right. Maybe I shouldn't spoil it. Yeah. Um but for those of you who haven't played the game, I wonder if I can find a bit that um a good example. Uh Okay, I was I'll show you one one little new thing. Uh which is that scene that um was cut and is 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 back in there because it's it's not the ending it's not a major spoiler um so yeah my character's adopt adopted a cat by this point this is quite late on in the game 
Um, so there's there's one new thing. <laughs> the Game Joy is now an ESP. Uh, um, so whereas it was an, a Game Joy, it's now an ESP because it's coming out on the PlayStation. So it's. <laughs> uh, and in fact, in this version, I don't know if my character's got it, but no. Uh, but you can also get a Sony Walkman. <laughs> There's a little surprise for you. Um, um, uh, so I was, yeah, I'm just going to show you. Um, okay, so this is a hack. That's not actually, that's not, okay, so imagine we're starting here, right? Um, so you don't normally use the coat to get to this location. That's just a hack that I've put in to test the game. But um, so in this scene, uh, and I'm not sure if I've got enough battery for you to really be able to see. Uh, there we go. Can you see that roughly? So there's a horrible, scary thing that's in this room in the basement. And everyone who played the game, um, well, a lot of people remark so like, w it has no function, and um, I tried shooting it, but nothing happened, and, s and things like this. And I really liked that. Right? For some reason, I, I really liked something that, about that captured my imagination when they said, uh, I tried shooting it, and nothing happened. So I've made it so that when you do, and please like, don't reveal this to people yet, but when you do shoot it, it then takes you to to this like hallucination, um, which is sort of typical Lone Survivor, but it was a way of putting this scene back in there, um, which which had been been cut, and I, I actually wanted in there, but I never, I was never happy with the dialogue, so I, I just, and I, I didn't know where to put it in the game as well, and this felt like just the right place, um, and it's it's one of the only scenes where you actually don't walk in a straight line, you you walk downwards. Um, and and you kind of maybe don't even notice, hopefully, until sort of you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm I'm going down here after a minute or so. Um, um, but this is typical lone survivor sort of nightmare scenario. Uh, it's more often about, it, well, for me, horror is not really about showing gory things. It's it's the the lead up it's the, the the bit that's quiet before the this not even a jump necessarily but it's just this this build up um and yeah this this hopefully was meant to be a scene that that really did that um but i felt like there were other places that did it better in the game and so i cut it um but in the end like i i found a place that seemed to fit it really well thematically so i I'm not just throwing it back in there because it's a deleted scene, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's actually two versions of this scene. A lot like uh, a lot, a lot of parts of the game work like that, where it sort of molds to your character's mental state. Um, so depending on on how uh, how well you've been looking after yourself, your mental state will get better or decline, and um, so. Um, if your mental state is pretty bad down here, then you see a worse, a worse version of this hallucination. Um, but I think my guy's okay. Yeah, <laughs> he said my conscience is clear. <laughs> um, um, and. And just like that, he's back to there. And so all the time Lone Survivor uses this kind of stuff where you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and that's hopefully where the scary part of it is. Um, but that was a really, you know, because I love it when people experiment and try things. And if there isn't, if there isn't a, a result, then I've tried to, to add one in every case where somebody suggested, like, and I'm, I'm I'm getting off the subject here of of making art here, but I suppose I just to talk about Let's Survive for a little bit. Um, uh, I, you know, it was a game where I wanted to to have all that the weird exploring ideas that you a, any kind of weird idea you'd have as a player, it would somehow take note of that or respond to it in some way, even if it's just at the end. Um, 
giving you uh, a, a note of, of what uh, contributed to your mental health. So the game gives you a massive like breakdown of, of what contributed to your to your mental health at the end, and um, it is literally everything from you know did you uh, sleep well did you eat well um, did you sleep for no reason did you drink water did you um, say this or that to somebody else um, and it just lists them it doesn't tell you how how much they've contributed because I, I really didn't want people to turn it into a game. Um, but just to play it and, and see what happens, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of the idea of Lone Survivor. And that scene has two versions of it, uh, a, a sort of darker one, um, uh, if your mental health is, is low. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like, once I'd got the art style from the, the beginning, it really, it really was... Um, it wasn't that long, like, I mean, sorry, it wasn't that much of a step um, to the final thing. Uh, although, it, you know, there are certain things that took, took longer than expected. You know, the, 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 like tweaking of the effects would, did take a very long time in this game because you're almost looking at them more than the, the art, I think, in, in this. Um, and... Uh, so yeah, you can you can probably see his flashlights fading, it's flickering, like you know all of the the stuff going on down here, um, and uh, yeah, it's um, I think using code, using what you have at your disposal, and starting off with a really like really really tight limitation um, is so important because it can even spiral like and get get bigger. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to move on to New Game Plus now, and this has been through a hell of. Um, this is the game that I'm working on at the moment. It's not finished, um, but this has been through a lot of lot of different stages as well, and um, it's it it. I basically knew that I wanted to make a dungeon crawler. Um, I fell in love with Dark Souls and Demon Souls, and. Um, much like I wanted to make something influenced by or inspired by Silent Hill, I wanted to make something inspired by um, Dark Souls and Demon Souls, in particular Demon Souls, actually. Um, if you don't know what that game is or those games are, they're, they're like, how could you describe it? Well, a very brutal, hard um, fantasy, dark fantasy, with almost no um, backstory or, or seemingly, I mean, it's there, but there's not like a, a lot of, um, there's not a lot of um, dialogue and there's not a lot of uh, unnecessary back um, cut scenes or anything like that. So the game is, is very immersive and, and it's, so it's, it's quite different in a way to, to Lone Survivor or Silent Hill, um, yeah, and it's but to me, there's the, the, the I, 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 what I want to do is hopefully have a game that has as as much of a theme as as Silent Hill d does, and you know as much uh, sort of a meaning attached to it, um, um, and and try and put that in in the same. A, put that with a, a game that is very satisfying to play action wise um and and very rewarding to replay and replay and uh on top of that it's a it's a four player game which it wasn't originally um so but the idea at the time is uh, i wanted to make a very dark dungeon crawler not dark necessarily but uh at, at the start i thought i wanted it to be dark um like moody and um black uh like maybe maybe that was from playing Dark Souls, but in the end, I I came to the conclusion that that wasn't what I wanted. Um, so I started off with I'm going to guess this one. Um, okay, so the very first thing I did was. I wanted to oh that's strange um 
I can't remember. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get characters moving in 3D because I wanted to make the game as... Um, oh, I thought I had a joystick with me. Um, I think this might be joypad controlled. Um, but I wanted the game to be full 3D, um, like third person, like Dark Souls. And um, so this was just an experiment in getting, getting that working. Um, and then just going through this, oh god, uh, and then, no, sorry about this, there's a lot of versions of this, um, hold on, the, the next version, um, right, is pretty much the first one that kind of looks like like New Game Plus. Um, but here, I actually, just to, to get, I, I photographed my Star Wars figure, so you might recognize this character um, from 12 angles. Because uh, I wanted to know how could I do, um, well, I was, I was going to do eight angles, but I, I thought I'd try a max maximum version um, of 12 angles. Um, I, I realized that quickly that, that, that 12 was going to be far too much work. Um, and just thinking about, you know, if, he, if he's going to have a, a four-frame walking animation um, even, then he's got to have, um, you know, four times eight walking frames of animation. And to do an attack in eight directions or, or you know, or 12 directions is going to require four or, tw oh, sorry, eight or 12 times as many frames of animation. Um, even in this incredibly low detail. So my limitation that I set myself was two colors. Um, the walls are two colors, the, the characters are, you know, and, and, and one of those colors is black. Um, so it's one color and black. Um, and one of the problems is it's really difficult to read from, from different angles, like sometimes this game would really rely on you being able to see exactly when an enemy's about to attack you because if you die in Dark Souls and it feels unfair, um, then the game is not working right. Like, you should always feel like the death is justified, you know? Like, if you, if you do something stupid, then you die. Um, but if you can't see what's going on, it's not going to be fair. Um, and... I, I I was really worried about that as well. Um, not at this point. I think at this point I was still just trying to figure out how can I how can I make um, this is supposed to be controlled with a, a PS3 pad, by the way. So you you know it's just like Dark, Dark Souls or Demon Souls. If you played it, you you can lock onto characters and spin around them. And um, this is just a sort of really basic movement, just a testing. Um, but uh, it's got a proper camera, so like if you I spend a while on the camera and things like that, I mean, and and that that you know you don't realize it, but that that stuff takes a while as well. You can see the camera follows him, kind of when he goes round a corner. Um, it it sort of follows neatly. Um, it, it's quite hard to show when I can't really control him, but uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, you see it sort of keeps him in view around corners and things like that. Um, so I spent a lot of time on on just getting that right, but then I didn't realize that the you know the um the look of the game was 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 still too advanced um sorry i'm going to do this one um sorry the theme oh uh what music uh, i don't think i i don't think i'm plugged in actually uh, i don't know if i can get music out um i've got no i've got no sound out uh coming from my laptop unfortunately uh, I, can we get sound I don't know um, so here's a yeah this actually might have even been before this one um, even though it's called number three this is probably before the other one um, another way of doing two colors but opposite so mostly color and and um, less black uh, the characters are hand drawn here, eight eight directions, um, but it just it was taking me a long time because it's really hard to draw things from forty five degree angles <laughs> if you're not an artist and things like that. 
Um, it's quite easy to do the front and back, you know. Once you've got the right, you can do the left. But it's things like doing things from an angle, like doing an attack from an angle, is really hard um, if you're not a technical artist. So, yeah, although I really, really wanted to make a game that looked like this as well, I couldn't do it. Um, So <clears throat> I think what happened next was I probably put that on hold for a while and um, then tried a totally different approach. Um, now, I'm hoping I can get this one to work. Uh, is it this one? Oh, I don't know if the... Oh, okay, so something's a bit wrong here, but... In fact, yeah, I'll just maybe that's a slightly broken version. Um, there's a slightly earlier one. Oh, there's actually an eight. God, <laughs> there is an eight. I don't know what that is, but I I know that this. Oh, oh, I see. Right, that was almost yeah becoming new game plus. So. Uh, I think six. No, it's five is the one. Sorry. I'm sorry about this. Um, okay, well, this will have to do. Um, I, my club is not going to work, I don't think. I'm sorry, my shield. Um, uh, I've really messed that up. What have I done? God. Somehow. So, ah, yeah, you see it's crashing. Right. <laughs> I've got a version of this that does work, so I'm just going to find that. Um, wait. Uh, I don't know. Does this work? Well, here we go. This will do. Um, just to explain before these guys kill me, because um, I'm going to start playing it in a sec. Um, all they do is they chase you, and they they have um, you know four directions. Um, it's it's top down view. It's much simpler in that way. Um, hold on. <laughs> So maybe in this version we haven't actually got health, but um, <laughs> or, or being hit. Uh, but this is maybe the version before it. But you can see how it moves, and um, the characters path fine towards you, and you can roll, um, which evades attacks. So those like rolling, attacking, and um, the characters chasing you indefinitely. Those three things I think are the key elements of this game, and in fact. This this demo, although I abandoned it shortly after this, um, I didn't see the potential in it. I realized like when looking back at it later on, it was like by far the closest to being an actual game. And even though the character's super simple and compared to what I was doing before, this was actually nearly a game. Whereas that was just like a really t time consuming tech demo at that point, all the other the 3D versions. Um, and that, that made me realize that, because I, I think I went back to the 3D versions. I started, I started playing with them more. Um, I really wanted to make this game, but I didn't know how to do it. it was, that was the problem. Um, and yeah, it's a shame I can't show you. Maybe this one actually has health. Yeah.
So you then have the risk of like, oh, if I run away from this guy, I'm going to get probably other guys come after me. I don't know if I've got any other guys in here, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it, there was already, already something to it. Um, just something scary about being relentlessly chased by a, a Zelda type sprite that maybe hadn't been done before. Like, I don't know. Um, and uh, so I did, I went back and I'm, I, am I, am I talking till 10.30? Sorry, 11.30. Um, does anyone know what time I'm supposed to finish, uh, by the way? No? 11.30. So I've got, we've got eight minutes here or something. Um, okay. So I should really get on to showing you the new game plus then. Um, um, so that I did more versions of that. I did more versions of the 3D one. And eventually I came, came to realize that... Um, it, the this one was the closest that I'd come to actually making a game, and so I decided to do this one, but but sort of a, a compromise where I'm doing some 3D, and um, hold on a minute, I'll just make sure. I don't know if that will run. Oh, will it? Um. Hmm. Yeah. So this is New Game Plus, the one I'm working on, and it's it's the same thing, but it's just like a little bit more 3D. Um, it's got the the 3D world, and the characters. It's basically about the same size as in the last game, um, a little bit bigger. Um, he's sort of in the middle, really, of the sizes that that I was showing you. The the kind of um, you know the the squid head guy and like and the the small guys. Um, I did a version of the 3D with the small guys, but they they it was impossible to read. So ultimately, this one, even though it was almost, I almost abandoned this because it's this game is really complicated as well. Um, you can't see it here, but like the actual, f you can uh, the frames of animation. Um, this. You can't see them all because the screen's not big enough, but there's like, I don't know, 180, 190 frames or something um, just for a character. Um, every character or every bit of armor needs that many frames of animation. So um, it's a four-player game, you know, so you've got, you've got your knight, you've got your, you've got your mage, um, um, and you've got your your ranger. You know, it's all the archetypes. There will be plenty more. Um, but um, so the actual each that means that all of the suits of armor and things that I do, I need to have like four directions, um, which I got down to three because you can flip it. Although originally I didn't want to do that, um, I realized I had to do it um, where where you flip the animation and also. Originally, I was going to have it so you can do. Um, so if you look at the dagger here, I've got a combo attack, um, and every every weapon's got like combo attack, and um, there's a there's a lunge. But so every every character's got to be able to do all of these different maneuvers, and there's an overhead, and there's you know there's a few other animations, obviously rolling in four directions. Um, so. It was, you know, it was still really complicated, and I was going to have it so you could use a melee weapon in both hands. Uh, for example, like you'd be able to do the dagger moves with both hands, and that would mean that I'd have to flip the character. I'd have to draw him in left and right. I wouldn't be able to just flip him over, and I'd actually have to draw him twice as much again. So I almost abandoned the game because of that. And that this is a really important point if, if you take anything away from what I'm saying today. That, that is just like that one limitation that I added on of like, okay, you can only hold a weapon in the right hand and um, uh, something simple in the left hand, like a bow or a shield or something like that, which just has a, a basic animation. If you can, like the bow has a couple of frames, um, but it's really, really basic. Um, that still means that every character has to be able to fire the bow and have the f bow firing animation in you know in the d various directions. But it's reusing frames and just saying like, no, he can't do like elaborate sort of melee lunge and things like that with his left hand. Um, just 
putting that limitation on, on it because otherwise I would have gone insane, you know, there's no way I could have finished it. Um, so, yeah. And um, that has actually made made it doable. Um, I'm, I'm now sort of past the point where I think I'm, I'm going to abandon the game and I, I'm actually going to finish this one, I think. So, just like, yeah, just like Lone Survivor, it's taken, you know, quite a number of years to actually to figure out what I want to do artistically, um, or what I can do and what I want to do is not always the same thing, you know, so it's finding something that I both can do and want to do. Um, and I think I have finally, finally found it with this game. It's, it's, you know, it's small enough, the characters, that I can do it. Um, it's still sort of hard, it takes a very long time, yeah, to... Um, I'll just play it for a minute, shall I? Um, do you want to see some? Um, Okay. out of practice. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh no. So they they grow into fruits <laughs> which you can then heal with, so I've got a bit more of a chance. So that's New Game Plus. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'll be around for for the rest of it, um, the indie uh, development. And um, I will actually I haven't bought it today. Stupidly, I was going to bring all four game pads. So um, if you catch me like later on, maybe I'll, I'll maybe go back to my hotel and grab the uh, four game pads so we can just have a game sort of somewhere out there. Um, so I'll just I'll have it on me. And uh, yeah, by all means, come and grab me if you want to have a four player game uh, later on. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. If you've got any questions, um, I'm, my whole, I, I guess, just to sum up, like, try and think about your limitations, you know, and try and try and find the right ones to to make your art, because otherwise you'll never finish it. Like, it's if you're anything like me, you know, you'll just never finish it. So just say, like, no, I'm not having more than 16 colours. I'm not having more than, you know, two two directions, or you know, I'm not having like eight frames of walking animations. I'm not I'm not having um, you know, I'm not going to rig and animate 3D stuff. I'm, you know, just do whatever you can to make it simpler for yourself because games take half your life to make and, you know, the, the less pain, the less grind, the more enjoyable they are to make. So that's all I'd say, really. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone's got... If anyone has questions for Jasper, um, can you raise your hand? Please keep your headphone on or we won't be able to. We've got a question. Hi, um, I was wondering as a sound designer composer, uh, as a game developer, do you do your own audio? Everything yourself? All right, thanks. Could we get a second microphone in here? That would be useful because he can't actually answer the questions right now. Is there a headset up there? There should be a headset. I actually came from, from sound design. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Is that is that working? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, I, I came to uh, I came to to making games from music actually because I, I used to be a drum and bass DJ and producer and, and that's what I did for about ten years before I started. Uh, so so the sound is a, a big part for me, you know. Um, um, I, I I don't know what what to say about it except that I, I think that people don't put enough effort into it and I, I really love it when people do. And one thing I, I would say is that you know don't necessarily match your sound with your vis with your visual like is because i really i'm not again like to harp on about this thing about people saying about retro look um that's not what i'm after at all i'm after something that's really modern like and i want it to sound modern as well i, I want it to sound heavy and and big and and you know as as big as i can possibly make it and look as as big and and sort of as i can possibly make it as well so it's not about that it's about doing what i can within my limitations and like luckily i, I have like with my my sound i've got a, a decent studio from making music for years and years so it's actually quite quick for me to do it's a it's the part of the game that that's actually easiest you know because like um for some people it's really hard i think uh, because they they have no musical bent at all so they they have to find somebody to do it but I'm, I'm actually lucky to because I came from that so yeah it's um but I, I think you know people don't give it enough respect like sound design is so important it's half of it it really is like so yeah put more love into it <laughs> yeah yeah hey Jasper yeah um have you considered um Expanding like uh, 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 because you're working on games yourself now, mm. and you're also talking about these limitations. That's quite a lot of work. Have mm. you thought about mm. that you want to like make it with someone else or, right. or multiple people at some point, or do you want to keep on making? I do, games I do yeah, I do think about that a lot. But I, I think ultimately, I'm always convinced by by Terry, who's a good, Terry Kavanagh, who's a good friend of mine, always reminds me that like I'm you know I can do everything so why shouldn't I, I do everything because it actually to, to to run a team unless you're good friends like Rami and, and JW like who know each other well um, then it's, it's actually really hard to you spend half the time I think doing the doing the inter team communication you know and like unless you're really you've got someone that you can totally you know inside out as a person like I, I would be very wary about it um, especially when doing it on a small scale like this so I, yeah that's my, my problem with it I really want to find an artist who can help me like do replicate the same style for New Game Plus but actually like just say I were to draw the the you know the the standing frames of the the monsters then like they they could draw the the rest of the animations for example but I just haven't found someone that that, that right for it basically um, so I'm I'm it's not that I'm not looking but it's just when the right person comes along and the right project then I yeah I would be, I'd be open to it but I'd be very wary I, I've you know, I've tried and failed to find people. So it's just, it's hard. It's really hard to find people. And, and in that case, you shouldn't give up. You should make your own stuff, you know, even if you can't draw or can't, like, do music. Um, music's another one where you can just get it as well, like, online. There's loads of royalty-free stuff, isn't there? So, like, you know, music's less of a problem. But draw, you just draw it yourself, you know. It's even if you can't, or think you can't, because Terry thinks he can't, but like Super Hexagon is a beautiful game. It's like, um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I don't think, I, I don't, I mean, I'm giving a lecture about art, I guess, right now, and I don't consider myself an artist at all. So uh, yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, next question here. Yeah. Um, hi, Jasper. Hi. So, Lone Survivor is coming to PlayStation and Vita. Yeah. Could you tell us something about your relationship with Sony? Um, yeah, I mean, it's like like all the indies right now. I think everyone's got nothing but positive stuff to say about them. It's they've. Yeah, well, we're not under any. I can assure you, I'm not being paid to say anything nice about them. I'm I'm actually. It's weird because I'm a Sony fan anyway. Like I've I've always played games on my PS3, and that tends to be where. Our game, like rather than, because at the end of the day, I don't want to sit on my my laptop or my my computer. At the end of the day, I wanted to sit on the couch and play games. So, 
I, I love the PlayStation anyway, so they didn't have to do much to convince me, you know. Um, uh, but the way they're doing it at the moment is fantastic. I was like, they said to me, so what do you want, you know, as a developer? And I was like, well, in an ideal world, we'd, we'd be having Sony, like, just giving out dev kits to anyone that was remotely interested and, and just saying, like, you know, go and make a game with it. Like, just here's the software and here's how to use it just get you know see what you can do and I, so that's how i feel that they should be doing it and he was like well we can sort that out you know so it's that kind of attitude i think that's really really ex inspiring about the the way they're working at the moment um we, we'll have to see if you know if the punters come but for, for as far as i can tell like all the people that are actually making the games are really really happy so yeah it's, it's great <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. We don't have time for further questions, I'm afraid. Okay. If you want to uh, talk to Jasper, Jasper looks I'll like I'll be around, this. so yeah. So just walk up to him, <laughs> talk to him. We'll take a 10-minute break and then start on the next presentation. Okay. Thank you, Jasper. Cheers. Thanks very much.